Mitanni, Hittite cuneiform Kur Arumi Tani, Mitani Mi Itani, also called Hanagalbat, Hanagalbat, Kanagalbat cuneiform Ha Ni Gal Bat in Assyrian or Naharan in Egyptian texts, was a Hurrian speaking state in northern Syria and southeast Anatolia from c. 1500 to 1300 BC. Mitanni came to be a regional power after the Hittite destruction of Amorite Babylon and a series of ineffectual Assyrian kings created a power vacuum in Mesopotamia. At the beginning of its history, Mitanni's major rival was Egypt under the Thutmosids. However, with the ascent of the Hittite Empire, Mitanni and Egypt struck an alliance to protect their mutual interests from the threat of Hittite domination. At the height of its power, during the 14th century BC, Mitanni had outposts centered on its capital, Washakani, whose location has been determined by archaeologists to be on the headwaters of the Khabar River. The Mitanni dynasty ruled over the northern Euphrates Tigris region between c. 1475 and c. 1275 BC. Eventually, Mitanni succumbed to Hittite and later Assyrian attacks and was reduced to the status of a province of the Middle Assyrian Empire. While the Mitanni kings were Indo-Aryan, they used the language of the local people, which was at that time a non-Indo-European language, Hurrian. Their sphere of influence is shown in Hurrian place names, personal names and the spread through Syria and the Levant of a distinct pottery type. Geography <inaudible> 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 The Mitanni controlled trade routes down the Khabar to Mari and up the Euphrates from there to Carchemish. For a time they also controlled the Assyrian territories of the Upper Tigris and its headwaters at Nineveh, Erbil, Ashur and Nuzi. Their allies included Kazuwatna in southeastern Anatolia, Mukish which stretched between Ugarit and Kwatna west of the Orontes to the sea, and the Nia which controlled the east bank of the Orontes from Alala down through Aleppo, Ebla and Hama to Katna and Kadesh. To the east, they had good relations with the Kassites. The land of Mitanni in northern Syria extended from the Taurus Mountains to its west and as far east as Nuzi modern Kirkuk and the river Tigris in the east. In the south, it extended from Aleppo across Nuhashe to Mari on the Euphrates in the east. Its center was in the Khabar River Valley, with two capitals, Tate and Washchakani called Taidu and Ushchakana respectively in Assyrian sources. The whole area supports agriculture without artificial irrigation and cattle, sheep and goats were raised. It is very similar to Assyria in climate, and was settled by both indigenous Hurrian and Amoritic speaking Amoru populations. Name The Mitanni kingdom was referred to as the Marianu, Naran or Mitanni by the Egyptians, the Hari by the Hittites, and the Hanagalbit by the Assyrians. The different names seem to have referred to the same kingdom and were used interchangeably, according to Michael C. Astor. Hittite annals mention a people called Hari who or Re, located in northeastern Syria. A Hittite fragment, probably from the time of Mersilii, mentions a king of the Hari. The Assyro-Akkadian version of the text renders Hari as Hanagalbit. Tushrata, who styles himself king of Mitanni, in his Akkadian Amarna letters, refers to his kingdom as Hanagalbit. Egyptian sources call Mitanni Nhrn which is usually pronounced as Naharan, Naharina from the Assyro-Akkadian word for river, cf. Aram Naharim. The name Mitanni is first found in the memoirs of the Syrian Wars c. 1480 BC of the official astronomer and clockmaker Amenemhet, who returned from the foreign country called Mitanni at the time of Thutmose I. The expedition to the Naharina announced by Thutmosis I at the beginning of his reign may have actually taken place during the long previous reign of Amenhotep I. Help believes that this was the expedition mentioned by Amenhotep II. <laughs> Topic. People The ethnicity of the people of Mitanni is difficult to ascertain. A treatise on the training of chariot horses by Kikuli contains a number of Indo Aryan glosses. Kamenhuber suggested that this vocabulary was derived from the still undivided Indo-Iranian language, but Merhofer has shown that specifically Indo-Aryan features are present. The names of the Mitanni aristocracy frequently are of Indo-Aryan origin, but it is specifically their deities which show Indo-Aryan roots Mitra, Varuna, Indra, Nasatya, though some think that they are more immediately related to the Kassites. 
The common people's language, the Hurrian language, is neither Indo-European nor Semitic. Hurrian is related to Urartian, the language of Urartu, both belonging to the hurro urartian language family. It had been held that nothing more can be deduced from current evidence. A Hurrian passage in the Amarna letters, usually composed in Akkadian, the lingua franca of the day, indicates that the royal family of Mitanni was by then speaking Hurrian as well. Bearers of names in the Hurrian language are attested in wide areas of Syria and the northern Levant that are clearly outside the area of the political entity known to Assyria as Hanel Galbit. There is no indication that these persons owed allegiance to the political entity of Mitanni, although the German term Auslandschoreiter Hurrian expatriates, has been used by some authors. In the 14th century BC numerous city-states in northern Syria and Canaan were ruled by persons with Hurrian and some Indo-Aryan names. If this can be taken to mean that the population of these states was Hurrian as well, then it is possible that these entities were a part of a larger polity with a shared Hurrian identity. This is often assumed, but without a critical examination of the sources. Differences in dialect and regionally different pantheons Hipat, Shawushka, Sheruma, Tila, etc. point to the existence of several groups of Hurrian speakers. History No native sources for the history of Mitanni have been found so far. The account is mainly based on Assyrian, Hittite, and Egyptian sources, as well as inscriptions from nearby places in Syria. Often it is not even possible to establish synchronicity between the rulers of different countries and cities, let alone give uncontested absolute dates. The definition and history of Mitanni is further beset by a lack of differentiation between linguistic, ethnic and political groups. Topic. Summary It is believed that the warring Hurrian tribes and city-states became united under one dynasty after the collapse of Babylon due to its sacking by Hittite king Mursili I, and the Kassite invasion. The Hittite conquest of Aleppo Yamhad, the weak Middle Assyrian kings who succeeded Puzer Asher III, and the internal strife of the Hittites had created a power vacuum in Upper Mesopotamia. This led to the formation of the Kingdom of Mitanni. King Baratarna of Mitanni expanded the kingdom west to Halab Aleppo and made the Canaanite king Idrimi of Alalik his vassal. The state of Kizuwatna in the west also shifted its allegiance to Mitanni, and Assyria in the east had become largely a Mitannian vassal state by the mid-15th century BC. The nation grew stronger during the reign of Shashtadar but the Hurrians were keen to keep the Hittites inside the Anatolian highland. Kizuwatna in the west and Ishua in the north were important allies against the hostile Hittites. After a few successful clashes with the pharaohs over the control of Syria, Mitanni sought peace with Egypt and an alliance was formed. During the reign of Shudurna in the early 14th century BC the relationship was very amicable, and he sent his daughter Gilu Hepa to Egypt for a marriage with pharaoh Amenhotep III. Mitanni was now at its peak of power. However, by the reign of Ariba Adad I Mitanni influence over Assyria was on the wane. Ariba Adad I became involved in a dynastic battle between Tushrata and his brother Artatama II and after this his son Shudurna II, who called himself King of the Hari while seeking support from the Assyrians. A pro-Hari, Assyria faction appeared at the royal Mitanni court. Ariba Adad I had thus loosened Mitanni influence over Assyria, and in turn had now made Assyria an influence over Mitanni affairs. King Ashur Ubalit I of Assyria attacked Shudurna and annexed Mitanni territory in the middle of the 14th century BC, making Assyria once more a great power. At the death of Shudurna, Mitanni was ravaged by a war of succession. Eventually Tushrata, a son of Shudurna, ascended the throne, but the kingdom had been weakened considerably and both the Hittite and Assyrian threats increased. At the same time, the diplomatic relationship with Egypt went cold, the Egyptians fearing the growing power of the Hittites and Assyrians. The Hittite king Supiluliuma I invaded the Mitanni vassal states in northern Syria and replaced them with loyal subjects. In the capital Washakani, a new power struggle broke out. The Hittites and the Assyrians supported different pretenders to the throne. Finally a Hittite army conquered the capital Washakani and installed Shadawaza, the son of Tushrata, as their vassal king of Mitanni in the late 14th century BC. The kingdom had by now been reduced to the Khabar Valley. 
The Assyrians had not given up their claim on Mitanni, and in the 13th century BC, Shalmaneser I annexed the kingdom. Early Kingdom As early as Akkadian times, Hurrians are known to have lived east of the river Tigris on the northern rim of Mesopotamia, and in the Khabar Valley. The group which became Mitanni gradually moved south into Mesopotamia before the 17th century BC. Hurrians are mentioned in the private Nuzi texts, in Ugarit, and the Hittite archives in Hadisha Cuneiform texts from Mari mention rulers of city-states in Upper Mesopotamia with both Amoru and Hurrian names. Rulers with Hurrian names are also attested for Urshim and Hashim, and tablets from Alalik layer 7, from the later part of the Old Babylonian period mention people with Hurrian names at the mouth of the Orontes. There is no evidence for any invasion from the northeast. Generally, these onomastic sources have been taken as evidence for a Hurrian expansion to the south and the west. A Hittite fragment, probably from the time of Mersili I, mentions a king of the Hurrians, Lugal Aaron, Mies Huri. This terminology was last used for King Tushrata of Mitanni, in a letter in the Amarna archives. The normal title of the king was King of the Huri Men without the determinative Kur indicating a country. It is believed that the warring Hurrian tribes and city-states became united under one dynasty after the collapse of Babylon due to the Hittite sack by Mersili I and the Kassite invasion. The Hittite conquest of Aleppo Yomkod, the weak Middle Assyrian kings, and the internal strifes of the Hittites had created a power vacuum in Upper Mesopotamia. This led to the formation of the Kingdom of Mitanni. The legendary founder of the Mitannian dynasty was a king called Kurta, who was followed by a king Shudurna. Nothing is known about these early kings. <laughs> Baratarna, Parsha ta -tar. King Baratarna is known from a cuneiform tablet in Nuzi and an inscription by Idrimi of Alalik. Egyptian sources do not mention his name, that he was the king of Naharan whom Thutmose III fought against in the 15th century BC can only be deduced from assumptions. Whether Parsha ta -tar, known from another Nuzi inscription, is the same as Baratarna, or a different king, is debated. Under the rule of Thutmose III, Egyptian troops crossed the Euphrates and entered the core lands of Mitanni. At Megiddo, he fought an alliance of 330 Mitanni princes and tribal leaders under the ruler of Kadesh. See Battle of Megiddo 15th century BC. Mitanni had sent troops as well. Whether this was done because of existing treaties, or only in reaction to a common threat, remains open to debate. The Egyptian victory opened the way north. Thutmose III again waged war in Mitanni in the 33rd year of his rule. The Egyptian army crossed the Euphrates at Carchemish and reached a town called Irene maybe present-day Aran, 20 km northwest of Aleppo, they sailed down the Euphrates to Emar and then returned home via Mitanni. A hunt for elephants at Lake Nija was important enough to be included in the annals. This was impressive PR, but did not lead to any permanent rule. Only the area at the middle Orontes and Phoenicia became part of Egyptian territory. Victories over Mitanni are recorded from the Egyptian campaigns in Nuhashche middle part of Syria. Again, this did not lead to permanent territorial gains. Baratarna or his son Shashtadar controlled the north Mitanni interior up to Nuhashche, and the coastal territories from Kizuwatna to Alalik in the kingdom of Mukish at the mouth of the Orontes. Idrimi of Alalik, returning from Egyptian exile, could only ascend his throne with Baratarna's consent. While he got to rule Mukish and Amayu, Aleppo remained with Mitanni. Shashtadar Shashtadar, king of Mitanni, sacked the Assyrian capital of Ashur some time in the 15th century during the reign of Nur Ili, and took the silver and golden doors of the royal palace to Washchakani. This is known from a later Hittite document, the Supilaliuma Shadawaza Treaty. After the sack of Ashur, Assyria may have paid tribute to Mitanni up to the time of Ariba Adad I BC. There is no trace of that in the Assyrian king lists, therefore it is probable that Ashur was ruled by a native Assyrian dynasty owing sporadic allegiance to the house of Shashtadar. While a sometime vassal of Mitanni, the Temple of Sin and Shamash was built in Ashur. The states of Aleppo in the west, and Nuzi and Arafa in the east, seem to have been incorporated into Mitanni under Shashtadar as well. 
The palace of the Crown Prince, the governor of Arafa has been excavated. A letter from Shashtadar was discovered in the house of Shilway Teshup. His seal shows heroes and winged geniuses fighting lions and other animals, as well as a winged sun. This style, with a multitude of figures distributed over the whole of the available space, is taken as typically Hurrian. A second seal, belonging to Shudderna I, but used by Shashtadar, found in Alalik, shows a more traditional Asiro Akkadian style. The military superiority of Mitanni was probably based on the use of two wheeled war chariots, driven by the Marjanu people. A text on the training of war horses, written by a certain Kikuli the Mitannian, has been found in the archives recovered at Hattusa. More speculative is the attribution of the introduction of the chariot in Mesopotamia to early Mitanni. During the reign of Egyptian pharaoh Amenhotep II, Mitanni seems to have regained influence in the middle Orontes Valley that had been conquered by Thutmose III. Amenhotep fought in Syria in 1425 BC, presumably against Mitanni as well, but did not reach the Euphrates. Artatama I and Shudderna II Later on, Egypt and Mitanni became allies, and King Shudderna II himself was received at the Egyptian court. Amicable letters, sumptuous gifts, and letters asking for sumptuous gifts were exchanged. Mitanni was especially interested in Egyptian gold. This culminated in a number of royal marriages. The daughter of King Artatama I was married to Thutmose IV. Kilu Hepa, or Gilakipa, the daughter of Shudderna II, was married to Pharaoh Amenhotep III, who ruled in the early 14th century BC. In a later royal marriage Tadu Hepa, or Tadakipa, the daughter of Tushrata, was sent to Egypt. When Amenhotep III fell ill, the king of Mitanni sent him a statue of the goddess Shashka Ishtar of Nineveh that was reputed to cure diseases. A more or less permanent border between Egypt and Mitanni seems to have existed near Katna on the Orontes River. Ugarit was part of Egyptian territory. The reason Mitanni sought peace with Egypt may have been trouble with the Hittites. A Hittite king called Tudalia conducted campaigns against Kizuwatna, Arzawa, Ishuwa, Aleppo, and maybe against Mitanni itself. Kizuwatna may have fallen to the Hittites at that time. Artashamara and Tushrata Artashamara followed his father Shudderna II on the throne, but was murdered by a certain Udhi, or Uthi. It is uncertain what intrigues that followed, but Udhi then placed Tushrata, another son of Shudderna, on the throne. Probably, he was quite young at the time and was intended to serve as a figurehead only. However, he managed to dispose of the murderer, possibly with the help of his Egyptian father-in-law, but this is sheer speculation. The Egyptians may have suspected the mighty days of Mitanni were about to end. In order to protect their Syrian border zone the new pharaoh Akhenaten instead received envoys from the resurgent powers of the Hittites and Assyria. From the Amarna letters we know how Tushrata's desperate claim for a gold statue from Akhenaten developed into a major diplomatic crisis. The unrest weakened the Mitannian control of their vassal states, and Aziru of Amoru seized the opportunity and made a secret deal with the Hittite king Supiluliuma I Kizuwatna, which had seceded from the Hittites, was reconquered by Supiluliuma. In what has been called his first Syrian campaign, Supiluliuma then invaded the western Euphrates Valley, and conquered the Amoru and Nuhashe in Mitanni. According to the later Supiluliuma Shatawaza Treaty, Supiluliuma had made a treaty with Artatama II, a rival of Tushrata. Nothing is known of this Artatama's previous life or connection, if any, to the royal family. He is called King of the Huri, while Tushrata went by the title King of Mitanni. This must have disagreed with Tushrata. Supiluliuma began to plunder the lands on the west bank of the Euphrates, and annexed Mount Lebanon. Tushrata threatened to raid beyond the Euphrates if even a single lamb or kid was stolen. By the reign of Ariba Adad I Mitanni influence over Assyria was on the wane. Ariba Adad I became involved in a dynastic battle between Tushrata and his brother Artatama II and after this his son Shudderna III, who called himself King of the Hari while seeking support from the Assyrians. A pro-Hari, Assyria faction appeared at the royal Mitanni court. Ariba Adad I had thus loosened Mitanni influence over Assyria, and in turn had now made Assyria an influence over Mitanni affairs. 
Supiluliuma then recounts how the land of Ishua on the upper Euphrates had seceded in the time of his grandfather. Attempts to conquer it had failed. In the time of his father, other cities had rebelled. Supiluliuma claims to have defeated them, but the survivors had fled to the territory of Ishua, that must have been part of Mitanni. A clause to return fugitives is part of many treaties between sovereign states and between rulers and vassal states, so perhaps the harboring of fugitives by Ishua formed the pretext for the Hittite invasion. A Hittite army crossed the border, entered Ishua and returned the fugitives or deserters or exile governments to Hittite rule. I freed the lands that I captured, they dwelt in their places. All the people whom I released rejoined their peoples, and Hatti incorporated their territories. The Hittite army then marched through various districts towards Washakani. Supiluliuma claims to have plundered the area, and to have brought loot, captives, cattle, sheep and horses back to Hatti. He also claims that Tushrata fled, though obviously he failed to capture the capital. While the campaign weakened Mitanni, it did not endanger its existence. In a second campaign, the Hittites again crossed the Euphrates and subdued Halab, Mukish, Nia, Arahati, Apina, and Katna, as well as some cities whose names have not been preserved. The booty from Arahati included charioteers, who were brought to Hatti together with all their possessions. While it was common practice to incorporate enemy soldiers in the army, this might point to a Hittite attempt to counter the most potent weapon of Mitanni, the war chariots, by building up or strengthening their own chariot forces. All in all, Supiluliuma claims to have conquered the lands, from Mount Lebanon and from the far bank of the Euphrates. But Hittite governors or vassal rulers are mentioned only for some cities and kingdoms. While the Hittites made some territorial gains in western Syria, it seems unlikely that they established a permanent rule east of the Euphrates. <laughs> Shadawaza, Kurtawaza A son of Tushrata conspired with his subjects, and killed his father in order to become king. His brother Shadawaza was forced to flee. In the unrest that followed, the Assyrians asserted themselves under Ashur Ubalit I, and he invaded the country, and the pretender Artatama, Atratama II gained ascendancy, followed by his son Shudurna. Supiluliuma claims that, "...the entire land of Mitanni went to ruin, and the land of Assyria and the land of Alshi divided it between them." But this sounds more like wishful thinking. Although Assyria annexed Mitanni territory, the kingdom survived. Shudurna wisely maintained good relations with Assyria, and returned to it the palace doors of Asher, that had been taken by Shashtadar. Such booty formed a powerful political symbol in ancient Mesopotamia. The fugitive Shadawaza may have gone to Babylon first, but eventually ended up at the court of the Hittite king, who married him to one of his daughters. The treaty between Supiluliuma of Hatti and Shadawaza of Mitanni has been preserved and is one of the main sources on this period. After the conclusion of the Supiluliuma Shadawaza Treaty, Piyashili, a son of Supiluliuma, led a Hittite army into Mitanni. According to Hittite sources, Piyashili and Shadawaza crossed the Euphrates at Carchemish, then marched against Aridu in Hurrian territory. They sent messengers from the west bank of the Euphrates and seemed to have expected a friendly welcome, but the people were loyal to their new ruler, influenced, as Supiluliuma claims, by the riches of Tushrata. Why are you coming? If you are coming for battle, come, but you shall not return to the land of the great king. They taunted. Shudurna had sent men to strengthen the troops and chariots of the district of Aridu, but the Hittite army won the battle, and the people of Aridu sued for peace. Meanwhile, an Assyrian army led by a single charioteer, marched on the capital Washakani. It seems that Shudurna had sought Assyrian aid in the face of the Hittite threat. Possibly the force sent did not meet his expectations, or he changed his mind. In any case, the Assyrian army was refused entrance, and set instead to besiege the capital. This seems to have turned the mood against Shudurna, perhaps the majority of the inhabitants of Washakani decided they were better off with the Hittite empire than with their former subjects. In any case, a messenger was sent to Piyashili and Shadawaza at Aridu, who delivered his message in public, at the city gate. Piyashili and Shadawaza marched on Washakani, and the cities of Haran and Pakaripa seem to have surrendered to them. While at Pakaripa, a desolate country where the troops suffered hunger, they received word of an Assyrian advance, but the enemy never materialized. The Allies pursued the retreating Assyrian troops to Nilep underscore Ini but could not force a confrontation. 
The Assyrians seem to have retreated home in the face of the superior force of the Hittites. Shadawaza became king of Mitanni, but after Supililiuma had taken Carchemish and the land west of the Euphrates, that were governed by his son Piyashili, Mitanni was restricted to the Khabar River and Balik River valleys, and became more and more dependent on their allies in Hattarsis. Some scholars speak of a Hittite puppet kingdom, a buffer state against the powerful Assyria. Assyria under Ashur Ubalit I began to infringe on Mitanni as well. Its vassal state of Nuzi east of the Tigris was conquered and destroyed. According to the Hittitologist Trevor R. Bryce, Mitanni or Hanagalbit as it was known was permanently lost to Assyria during the reign of Mursili III of the Hittites, who was defeated by the Assyrians in the process. Its loss was a major blow to Hittite prestige in the ancient world and undermined the young king's authority over his kingdom. Shatwara I The royal inscriptions of the Assyrian king Adad Nirari I c. BC relate how the vassal king Shatwara of Mitanni rebelled and committed hostile acts against Assyria. How this Shatwara was related to the dynasty of Partatama is unclear. Some scholars think that he was the second son of Artatama II, and the brother of Shatawaz's one-time rival Shudurna. Adad Nirari claims to have captured King Shatwara and brought him to Ashur, where he took an oath as a vassal. Afterwards, he was allowed to return to Mitanni, where he paid Adad Nirari regular tribute. This must have happened during the reign of the Hittite king Mursili II, but there is no exact date. Wasashata Despite Assyrian strength, Shatwara's son Wasashata attempted to rebel. He sought Hittite help, but that kingdom was preoccupied with internal struggles, possibly connected with the usurpation of Hattusili III, who had driven his nephew or high Teshup into exile. The Hittites took Wasashata's money but did not help, as Adad Nirari's inscriptions gleefully note. The Assyrians expanded further, and conquered the royal city of Taidu, and took Washakanu, Amasaku, Kahat, Shuru, Nabula, Hura and Shudahu as well. They conquered Aridu, destroyed it utterly and sowed salt over it. The wife, sons and daughters of Wasashata were taken to Asher, together with much booty and other prisoners. As Wasashata himself is not mentioned, he must have escaped capture. There are letters of Wasashata in the Hittite archives. Some scholars think he became ruler of a reduced Mitanni state called Shubriya. While Adad Nirari I conquered the Mitanni heartland between the Balik and the Khabar from the Hittites, he does not seem to have crossed the Euphrates, and Carchemish remained part of the Hittite kingdom. With his victory over Mitanni, Adad Nirari claimed the title of Great King in letters to the Hittite rulers. <laughs> Shatwara II In the reign of Shalmaneser I 1270s to 1240s, King Shatwara of Mitanni, a son or nephew of Wasahata, rebelled against the Assyrian yoke with the help of the Hittites and the nomadic Alamu Arameans around 1250 BC. His army was well prepared, they had occupied all the mountain passes and waterholes, so that the Assyrian army suffered from thirst during their advance. Nevertheless, Shalmaneser I won a crushing victory for Assyria over the Hittites and Mitanni. He claims to have slain 14,400 men, the rest were blinded and carried away. His inscriptions mention the conquest of nine fortified temples, 180 Hurrian cities were "...turned into rubble mounds," and Shalmaneser "...slaughtered like sheep the armies of the Hittites and the Alamu his allies." The cities from Taidu to Aridu were captured, as well as all of Mount Kashayar to Aluhat and the fortresses of Sudu and Haranu to Carchemish on the Euphrates. Another inscription mentions the construction of a temple to the Assyrian god Adad, Hadad in Kahat, a city of Mitanni that must have been occupied as well. <laughs> Hanagalbit is an Assyrian province. A part of the population was deported and served as cheap labor. Administrative documents mention barley allotted to uprooted men, deportees from Mitanni. For example, the Assyrian governor of the city Nahor, Meli Sah received barley to be distributed to deported persons from Shudahu, as seed, food for their oxen and for themselves. The Assyrians built a line of frontier fortifications against the Hittites on the Balik River. 
Mitanni was now ruled by the Assyrian Grand Vizier Ili Pada, a member of the royal family, who took the title of King of Hanagalbit. He resided in the newly built Assyrian administrative centre at Tel Sabi Abayad, governed by the Assyrian steward Tamit. Assyrians maintained not only military and political control, but seem to have dominated trade as well, as no Hurrian or Mitanni names appear in private records of Shalmaneser's time. Under the Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I c. BC, there were again numerous deportations from Hanagalbit East Mitanni to Asher, probably in connection with the construction of a new palace. As the royal inscriptions mention an invasion of Hanagalbit by a Hittite king, there may have been a new rebellion, or at least native support of a Hittite invasion. The Mitanni towns may have been sacked at this time, as destruction levels have been found in some excavations that cannot be dated with precision, however. Tel Sabi Abayad, seat of the Assyrian government in Mitanni in the times of Shalmaneser, was deserted between 1200 and 1150 BC. In the time of Ashur Nirari III, c. 1200 BC, the beginning Bronze Age collapse, the Phrygians and others invaded and destroyed the Hittite Empire, already weakened by defeats against Assyria. Some parts of Assyrian ruled Hanagalbit was temporarily lost to the Phrygians also, however, the Assyrians defeated the Phrygians and regained these colonies. The Hurrians still held Katmuhu and Pafu. In the transitional period to the early Iron Age, Mitanni was settled by invading Aramaeans. <laughs> Indo-Aryan superstrate Some theonyms, proper names and other terminology of the Mitanni exhibit close similarities to Indo-Aryan, suggesting that an Indo-Aryan elite imposed itself over the Hurrian population in the course of the Indo-Aryan expansion. In a treaty between the Hittites and the Mitanni, the deities Mitra, Varuna, Indra, and Nasatya Ashvins are invoked. Kikali's horse training text includes technical terms such as Ika Eka, 1, Tara tri, 3, Panza pancha, 5, Sata sapta, 7, Na Nava, 9, Vartana, Vartana turn, round in the horse race. The numeral Ika 1 is of particular importance because it places the superstrate in the vicinity of Indo-Aryan proper as opposed to Indo-Iranian or early Iranian which has A-I-V-A. In general, another text has babru, babru, brown, parita, palita, gray, and pinkara, pingala, red. Their chief festival was the celebration of the solstice, Vishuva, which was common in most cultures in the ancient world. The Mitanni warriors were called Maria, the term for warrior in Sanskrit as well. Note Mista nnu equals Mizda, tilde Sanskrit mita, payment for catching a fugitive. Sanskritic interpretations of Mitanni royal names render Artashamara Artasamara as Arta Smara, who thinks of Arta, Urta, Buridashva, Buridasua, Buriyasua as Pritisha, whose horse is dear, Priyamazda, Priyamazda as Priyameda, whose wisdom is dear, Sitarada as Sitaratha, whose chariot is shining, Indaruda, Endaruda as Indroda, helped by Indra, Shadavaza, Sadawaza as Sativaha, winning the race price. Sabandu as Sabandu, having good relatives, Tushrata, Tuasarata, Tusrata, etc., as asterisk Tuayasaratha, Vedic Tvastr, whose chariot is vehement. <laughs> Mitanni rulers Short chronology all dates must be taken with caution since they are worked out only by comparison with the chronology of other ancient Near Eastern nations. Legacy Within a few centuries of the fall of Washakani to Assyria, Mitanni became fully Assyrianized and linguistically Aramized, and use of the Hurrian language began to be discouraged throughout the Neo-Assyrian Empire. However, Urartian, a dialect closely related to Hurrian seems to have survived in the new state of Urartu, in the mountainous areas to the north in their Armenian highlands. In the 10th to 9th century BC inscriptions of Adad Nirari II and Shalmaneser III, Hanagalbit is still used as a geographical term. Topic see also Nagar, Syria History of the Hittites Short Chronology Timeline Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Hall, E. The Economic Role of Hanagalbit at the Beginning of the Neo-Assyrian Expansion, in, Hans Jorg Nissen, Johannes Renger, eds, Mesopotamian und Sein Nachbarn. Politische und kulturelle Wechselbesehungen im Alten Orient vom 4. Bis 1. Jartausend v. 
CHR Berliner Beatrice Zoom Vorderen Orient 1 Berlin Reimer 1982 349 to 354 Herrick Amir Assyria and Galbet. A historical reconstruction of the bilateral relations from the middle of the 14th to the end of the 12th centuries BC Studien zur Orientalistik Hildesheim Olms 1987 Kuhn Kord, Politische Schienerie und Internationale Besiehungen Vorderasiens um die Mitte der 2. Jartauschens vorchr, Zugleich ein Konzept der Kurschronologie. MIT Einer Zetafel, in, Hans Georg Nissen, Johannes Renger, eds, Mesopotamian und Sein Nachbarn. Politische und kulturelle Wechselbesiehungen im Alten Orient vom 4. Bis 1. Jartausend v. CHR Berliner Beatrice Zoom Vorderen Orient 1 Berlin Reimer 1982 203 to 264 Novak Mirko Mitani Empire and the Question of Absolute Chronology Some Archaeological Considerations in Manfred Biedek Ernst Czerny EDS The Synchronization of Civilizations in the Eastern Mediterranean in the Second Millennium BC 3 Österreichisch Akademie der Wissenschaften Denkschrift Band 37 Wien 2007, ISBN 978-3-7001-3527-2, pp. 389-401. Star, R. F. S. Nuzzi London 1938 Theme, P. The Aryan Gods of the Mitanni Treaties, Journal of the American Oriental Society 80, 301-317 von Dasso, Eva Melita. Social Stratification of Alala under the Mitanni Empire, S. L. S. N. 1997. Widener, Assyrian und Hanelgalbet. Ugaritica 6 Wilhelm, Gernot, The Hurrians, Aris and Phillips Warminster 1989. Topic external links Mitanni Livius. Org. Dutch excavations at Tel Sabi Abayad Excerpts from the text of the Shupilaliuma Shadawaza Treaty.